Namo Buddhaya. Today I am taking up the Middle Discourses 44 which is titled The Shorter Classification. This discourse is on the same lines of Middle Discourses 43 which had a question answer format. Here also there is a question answer format between two but between two different individuals. The first individual who is asking the questions is Lehman Visakha and uh, that Lehman Visakha went to see the nun Dhammadina, right? And the uh, nun Dhammadina, uh, she answered the questions, right? So again, I'm it's like a it's deep, so I'm trying to like make it short, simple, clear, easy to understand for you. But I request you, and I am sharing only from my little understanding that I have right now. So I request you that you also please read this discourse at your end. The link to the discourse is given in the description. So let us start. So basically, uh, 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 Visaka asked, Ma'am, they speak of things called identity. What is identity? Visaka, the, the nun Dhammadina answered, Visaka, the Buddha said that these five grasping aggregates are identity. That is, form, feeling, perceptions, choices and consciousness. The Buddha said that these five grasping aggregates are identity. Right. So the self that we see, that we uh, that we think that we are, that is basically an illusion. That self is basically composed of these five grasping aggregates. Form, our body, feelings, perceptions, choices and consciousness. Right. So we are a bundle of these, like it's like five flowing rivers. Right. And we are at the center. So, and these, so we, our self, our self is key keeps on changing because these five rivers are cha changing right so every moment we are a new being we are a new person right okay so saying good ma'am Vishakha approved and agreed with Dhammadina then he asked another question ma'am they speak of this thing called origin of identity what is the origin of identity Nan Dhammadina said it's the craving that leads to future lives mixed up with relishing and greed taking pleasure wherever it lands, that is, craving for sensual pleasures, craving to continue existence and craving to end existence. The Buddha said that this is the origin of identity. So here basically identity is basically suffering, right? Origin of identity. Origin of identity means this identity is itself suffering. So what is the origin of identity? It's craving, right? The craving leads continues this identity right and this identity basically leads to future craving that causes our future lives right what are the cravings there are three types of cravings cravings of sensual pleasures craving to continue this existence that means people who pray to god and you know all the deities that may i live long may i live many 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 lives you know all these prayers what they do is basically they crave for a continuity in existence Right? So either, so you have to decide somewhere whether you want to continue this existence or whether if you realize that this samsara is suffering, which is noble truth number one, this life, this samsara is suffering. And then you decide that I have to, I want to leave this samsara. Right? I want to come out of this samsara. Right? So this craving of sensual pleasures, this craving of to continue the existence and this craving to end the existence. This, some people have this craving to end the existence. That is also a craving. That means they have these suicidal tendencies, self-harm, nihilistic tendencies. Right? So that is also a craving in itself. So that also keeps the person bound. The Buddha said this is the origin of identity. Ma'am, they speak of this thing called cessation of identity. So all these things are corresponding to the four noble truths. This is the third noble truth, cessation of identity. So what is the cessation of identity? It's the feeding, feeding away and cessation of the very same craving with nothing left over, giving it away, letting it go, releasing it, not clinging to it. The Buddha said that this is the cessation of identity. Then Visakha asked, Ma'am, they speak of the practice that leads to cessation of identity. So, Visakha, so Nan Dhammadina said, the practice that leads to cessation of identity is, is that the Buddha spoke of is simply the Noble Eightfold Path. What is the Noble Eightfold Path? Right view, right thought, right speech, right action, right livelihood, right effort, right mindfulness, right emotion. So this is the Noble Eightfold Path. So if you are a student of Buddha's teachings, four noble truths and the Noble Eightfold Path is the core of the Buddha's teaching. 
whichever tradition that you are practicing Buddha's teachings in, you have to have a firm hold on this, right? So if you feel that you know this thing is not very clear, you can check out my videos on the Noble Eightfold Path, or I have a course also on Buddha teachings level one course where I have explained all these fundamental topics, fundamental things in that particular course. It's an online video course where you can explore this, and I have explained in more detail. But ma'am. Is that grasping the exact same thing as the five grasping aggregates or grasping is one thing and the five grasping aggregates another? So uh, the nun replied, grasping is not the exact same thing nor is the grasping one thing and the five grasping aggregates another. The desire and the greed for the five grasping aggregates is the grasping there. So for me it was a bit not clear this line. The desire and greed for the five grasping aggregates is the grasping there. What my understanding is, this desire and the greed for the five grasping aggregates is the grasping, right? So if basically the aggregates exist, form, feelings, perceptions, perceptions, choices and consciousness are there, but I don't grasp for them. I am totally mindful. I don't grasp. So I look at a, uh, uh, I look at something uh, wonderful to, to eat and I am totally mindful that, you know, I am looking at it. I do not grasp. I do not crave. That is the ending of suffering, right? My suffering continues till the time my craving continues, right? So I have to, in my daily life, let go of all my craving towards these five. Stop grasping at these grasp aggregates and to put an end to my suffering. But ma'am, how does the identity view come about? So basically here the nun says, it's when an unlearned person regards form as self, self as having form, form in self or self in form. They regard feelings, perceptions, choices, consciousness as self, self as having this, 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 this. So identity view, this is like the wrong view, right? This view that person has that the form is self, this body is me, these feelings are me, this consciousness is me. That is the wrong view. That keeps us bind, bound in the samsara. That keeps us bound in the cycle of suffering. What basically we have to do is that we have to just witness that this body is not me. These feelings are not me. So when feelings arise, we don't say, I am angry. I am an angry person. I just say that right now these feelings of anger are arising. Anger is arising. Right, right now this uh, feeling of sadness is arising. Right now these feelings of craving is arising. I just mindfully witness and witness and keep witnessing, keep witnessing in every moment. Right? This is the practice of Vipassana. This is the practice of Vipassana in our daily life, moment to moment. Keep witnessing whatever is arising. Keep witnessing. right? And with this practice that we develop, our mindfulness becomes so strong that all this in one mind moment, all this, the whatever accumulated thing drops and we are free. right? So, how does the identity view not come about? So, again, reverse response. Then, if you don't regard the form as self, so first of all, you have to clear the view that you have if you don't regard the form as self, the self having form, right? All these things. If you detach yourself, if you don't regard the body as your own, if you don't regard the feelings as your own, this anger is not me. I understand that. This anger is not me. This body is not me. Then you have got rid of the wrong view. What is the noble eightfold path? The same thing that has been ex explained. Okay. But ma'am, is the noble eightfold path conditioned or unconditioned? The Noble Eightfold Path is conditioned. This is based on the conditions. And the three practice categories included in the Noble Eightfold Path or is the Noble Eightfold Path included in the three practice categories? So basically, if you divide the Noble Eightfold Path, there are three categories. One is ethics, which is right speech, right action, right livelihood. Second category is mind development. Mind development or other word that is used here is immersion, concentration. Right? So what that category consists is right effort, right mindfulness, right concentration. Third category is right wisdom, which is right view, right thinking. So, so the nun explained that the noble eightfold path is contained in these three categories and not the reverse way around. Right? So this is like basically three elements that we have. If you are beginner to Buddha's teachings, you are not clear on certain things, then you can also join my uh, uh, Monday uh, sessions where I take you end to end on how to start on the Buddha's path, right? Okay, it's a Monday live session that I do, right? Okay. You, 
what is immersion what are the foundations of immersion what the unification of mind is immersion how many processes are there there are basically three processes physical verbal mental processes then what are the physical process what is a verbal process what is a mental process so breathing is a physical process placing the mind and keeping it connected are verbal processes perceptions and feelings are mental processes so that was being explained then feelings how many types of feelings are there pleasant painful neutral three types of feelings that are there anything felt physically or mentally as pleasant or enjoyable this is pleasant feeling anything felt physically or mentally as painful or unpleasant this is a painful feeling anything felt physically or mentally as neither pleasurable nor painful that is a neutral feeling what underlying ten, uh, uh, tendencies underlie each of the three feelings the underlying tendency for greed underlies the pleasant feeling the underlying tendency right so basically we have tendencies these tendencies underlie the painful feeling pleasant feeling neutral feeling so for example you see an object outside so you get because your eye contacts that particular object outside there is a contact that gets established a feeling gets generated why a feeling gets generated because the underlying tendency now if the pleasant feeling gets generated the underlying tendency is greed if the tendency painful feeling is generated the underlying tendency is repulsion and if the neutral feeling is generated the underlying tendency is ignorance right so these are the tendencies so so as we do our vipassana meditation as we are more more and more mindful when the pleasant feeling comes as we become more and more subtle as we, we meditate we can recognize this this arising of this tendency of greed right so i see like a beautiful woman and the that tendency of greed right of you no know, grasping that arises which gives a pleasant feeling of you know lust right so that we have to keep witnessing in ourselves unless we do witness unless we shine the torch of awareness on these tendencies in our mind we will not be able to liberate that is why buddha teaching is deep work following buddha's teachings is deep work it's not easy right because you have to be at that subtle level to practice these things underlying tendency to greed should be given up when it comes to pleasant feeling the underlying tendency to repulsion or aversion is another word need to be given up when it comes to painful feeling the underlying tendency to ignorance should be given up when it comes to neutral feeling right so this is what we do in our vipassana meditation when we sit for one hour in vipassana meditation we just recognize these tendencies as they arise and we let go of these tendencies we just accept this particular feeling or sensation as it arises as it is arising right now not not getting stuck in the tendencies or not m- moving into those feelings right should these underlying tendencies be given up regarding all instances of these feelings no not in all instances so there is some detailed description of this then the final question then he was asking what is the counter counterpart of pleasant feeling painful feeling counterpart of painful feeling pleasant feeling counterpart of neutral feeling ignorance counterpart of ignorance knowledge counterpart of knowledge freedom freedom counterpart of freedom extinguishment what is the counterpart of counterpart of extinguishment so so then the nun said your question goes too far vishaka you couldn't figure out the limit of questions for in- extinguishment is the culmination destination and end of spiritual life if you wish you can go to the buddha and ask so he went to the buddha so he bowfully he, he bowed respected the nun for her answers and he went to the buddha and asked the same question so buddha said the nun has is very astute and she has answered with great wisdom if you would have also asked me i would have answered the same buddha also did not ask that what after extinguishment right so uh, so buddha's teachings is suffering end of suffering that is the basic teaching right so uh, this is the uh, you know, middle discourses 44 the shorter classification i hope there have been some insights from this in my sharing do please read the discourse at your end 
do share your insights and reflections in the comment section thank you so much for watching this video namo buddhaya namo buddhaya